Hello everybody, my name's Chris. Is it worth it y'all? Let's find out. Welcome to the kitchen. It is already a hot mess because we have already started our project. Today what we're going to do is we're going to take something that's really cheap in the store right now, cranberries, and we're going to turn it into, whether you love it or hate it or not, jellied cranberry sauce. We're going to go over the prices, what ingredients are in some of the top brands, and see is it really worth it, the time and the money, to take regular old cranberries and turn it into a homemade product. All right, so first things first, let's talk about what we're going to need. First, you're going to need, this is my canning Bible. It's so easy to preserve. This is the test kitchen. The University of Georgia's extension office is the test kitchen for the USDA. So this is all the approved USDA methods and whatnot uh, to can home canned products. Today on page 42 of, oh, what edition is this? I don't even remember. Ninth edition, maybe? Oh, sixth edition. This is the sixth edition, and on page 42, we have the cranberry sauce recipe. And we're going to follow this to the T. Four cups of cranberries, two cups of sugar, and one cup of water. And then we're going to follow these guidelines to make sure that we use an approved method. So we got our cranberries. And we're going to turn it into this. Another item I just received in the mail is this guy right here. I have never had a electric canner before. I did a test run yesterday with that test batch and I am impressed. What we have on the stove already is a ton of cranberries cooking down. So per the instructions, what I did was I put a little bit of water in there, put all the cranberries in there and just cooking it until all of the cranberries have burst. Okay, this is the part that is long and tiresome so this is the really is it worth it part so what you do is you just sit here and run this stuff through this sieve to get what we're working to do is get all these big chunks out because we obviously don't want that as a part of the jelly so this is going to be like the skins any seeds or hard bits so we're going to go through here until we get two, about roughly two cups of jelly. You can see that's what it looks like when it comes off here. Let me scrape some off. See it? I mean, there's a ton. It's really cool because cranberries have a ton of pectin, so you don't have to add pectin. See all that? That's what we're going for. So I'll catch you back. I'll keep track of what time long this takes to get two cups because, again, I'm processing way more than what one recipe calls for. So... Um, I'll meet you right back here when we get done sieving all this cranberry stuff. All right, that wasn't too terrible. That was about, I want to say, 10 to 11 minutes. And here's about, here's the stuff we have left. And then it is about a little over two cups of the cranberry, we're going to call it jelly at this point. So this is what four cups looks like after we're done turning it in from this to this. Now next on the list is we're gonna put it back on the stove. We're gonna add the sugar per the directions, stir it up, and then we're gonna jar it. Okay, here we go. We got a, oops, I need a little spatula. We've got all of our ingredients. What we're going to do is, I'm gonna add the sugar first. This is two cups of sugar. Yes, I used a dry measure. I just put it in a wet measuring cup. And then we got this, I'm sure you're supposed to call it a fruit, fruit puree, but it's just like fruit sludge. I keep wanting to call it sludge because it's just, it's awesome. And it's such a pretty color too. So we'll call it fruit puree, not sludge. Oh, and I did taste it on accident and oof. If you're thinking that this is too much sugar, <laughs> this stuff is so tart, it's insane. All right, to the stove. All right, we are at the stove. We are gonna turn our burner on, I don't know, medium. We are dealing with sugar and I don't wanna like scorch anything. So this should not take too long. We are gonna not hit the camera with my spoon. Get this incorporated, get this melted. I'm gonna turn my lids back on. I just like to have them warm. 
I know you most likely don't need to do this, but I like it, so I'm doing it. And then we're going to put them in these clean jars, and into the canner they go. And just like that, three minutes later, we're ready to put it in jars. Okay, let's see. The recipe states that this is going to make two pints. I have half pints because I have a smaller family and there is no way that I would eat a pint of cranberry sauce in one sitting. So we are going to do half pints today. Let me get my spatula. Get the big one. Wash all the chunks off of it. Hold on guys, sorry. I only got one good spatula right now. Okay, I'm probably gonna, let's see, scooch these guys out of the way. Let's fill up some jars real quick. Okay, looks good. And it does say half inch head space, so I'm gonna go half inch. This is a teeny tiny small batch, so I feel comfortable pouring it. Alrighty, there's one. So, probably have to put some, that's an inch head space. Let's go a little bit more. About there. Let's see what that looks like. Oh yeah, way better. Okay, cool. And yes, you do need to be particular about your head space. In a different video, we'll talk about that and why it's important. But whenever you're talking about home preservation, Please, please, please follow the directions. We'll spoon some more into that one. That's I'm really good at pouring an inch headspace apparently today. All right, let's see. Oh, we're gonna get so close to the actual amount. Also understand too that whenever these recipes say two pints, it's usually, it's all approximate. It doesn't mean that you're guaranteed like the size of the size of the cranberries matter how long you cook it if you got it if you get all the stuff out of the bottom of the pan see like that's not going to be enough so i have more going so i'll fill that one up later but what i am going to do is make sure that i'm at an inch head or a half inch there's a half inch that one's good so let me go get a spoon real quick Let's spoon some out of these other jars and make these three jars perfect. And then I'll come back and fill this other jar up later. All right. You are going to want to debubble. You notice that I like to shake my jars, and I did taste it. And it's just cranberry enough, and it's just sweet enough. Here. Oh, yeah. Here, let me help you out right here. The pleasures of home canning. You can look stuff off the table. Ah. Okay, let me get that off my hands. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put vinegar on a paper towel. Wipe these rims because we're dealing with sugar. Put lids and rings on and get them in the brand new canner, which is very exciting. And I am going to run this one with just this batch. That way we get true counts and all that good jazz. So, all right. Oh, hang on. Let's go get these lids out of here. Yes, they're hot. And I do not have my magnet stick, so we're going to cheat. Use a fork. It's just as easy because the tines will pick up. The lids. You can just get them off of there like that. There we go. Two. Snag another one out of here. Wait for it. It doesn't want to go on the canner. Three. Perfect. Queens. All right. Finger tight, just like that. And I will say, the four jar lids are 
amazing. All right, we're gonna go throw these in the canner and set it. Always make sure you follow your canning guidelines per the instruction manual that comes with your canner. With this one, we're gonna be doing water bath, so it's said to put enough water to fill the jars, which I did a test batch yesterday, so that's the water from yesterday. Obviously, it's sealed well because there's nothing in there, so we're gonna throw these in here. Now, this little fancy gadget says, put the lid down, close, put it on exhaust, we're going to hit water bath and the time was 15 minutes and then ooh, one more and then we hit start and then it does this little doodad until steam comes out which i'll show you and then it does the countdown after i hit the button one more time okay for this canner when we've got a steady steam of <laughs> when we have a steady steam of stream coming out of the top of this thing we hit start one time. Now it's going to do the countdown. Whenever it's finished counting down, it turns itself off. And when this steam disappears and the safety valve drops, you can open this thing up and the water bath canning process is over. I'm totally loving this electric canner. I never thought I would ever say that because I'm kind of a canning purist when it comes to equipment. So, oh, it's kind of growing on me. All right, y'all, you ready? One of the best features about this machine, whether it's in water bath mode like it is now, or whether it's in, well, especially in pressure canning mode. Now, obviously I'm standing right here, so we're gonna see it, but if I was off doing something else, I walked away from the canner, the best feature of this thing, it turns itself off. So if I got distracted and I had a squirrel moment and was working on a computer or something or was downstairs folding laundry or whatever, it turns itself off. Now, can't pull the stuff out just yet. Whenever that stream of steam disappears, we'll open it up and we'll make sure, we'll check to see how well we did. You hear that? Time to open the canner. All right, looks like they survived. Let's get them out. There we have it. Okay, so let's go ahead and look up ingredients and cost of uh, cranberry sauce. So let's see. Okay, let's see. Target, $1.58 for Amazon. Let's go look at Amazon. Okay, Amazon, $1.58. Let's go look at the ingredient list. Cranberries, ugh. High fructose corn syrup. Corn syrup, citric acid. Okay, I want to get rid of the corn syrup, the high fructose, and the citric acid. Refrigerate after opening. Six servings in one can. What size can is this? 14 ounces. Okay, so almost, um, almost a full pint. Close. $1.58, so it's 11 cents per ounce. Okay. Let's go look at something else. Let's see. Walmart. Here's a great value brand. Let's look at that one. Okay. Great value brand is $1.66 for 14 ounces. Oh, sorry. Then it's $1.83 now. Go figure. Okay. Let's go look at ingredient list. High for just corn syrup. Okay. Well. I can already tell you that for me, getting rid of the high fructose corn syrup and the citric acid, I'm, that's, I mean, it's already a no brainer for me, but some people may not think that because this is 13 cents an ounce. So, um, let's look at the, I got cranberries. I think I paid 99 cents for that, a one pound bag. They're a buck 50. I got them for 99 cents at Aldi. And then let's look at sugar because that's what I used. 
81 cents a pound. So let's do some math. If it's 81 cents a pound, so we need to do 81 divided by 16. 81 divided by 16 is 5 cents. We're going to add 6. So we're not saving any money. We're not saving any money per se, per ounce. So, but what we are gaining is high fructose corn syrup's gone. Corn syrup's gone. Citrus acid is gone. I'll take that. So is your, you need to ask, is it worth it? Is your time worth high fructose corn syrup, corn syrup, and citric acid? That's the real question for you. For me, totally 100% worth it. Well, there you have it. We figured out whether turning cranberries into jelly cranberry sauce into a home product versus buying it at the grocery store was really worth it, y'all. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day today to watch this video and hang out with me in my kitchen. We'll hope to see you on the next video real soon. Bye, y'all.